This is Intro to Decryption Techniques, a sequel video to my earlier series on the RSA encryption algorithm. I'd like to start off by letting you know that I'll be assuming that you're pretty familiar with the RSA with RSA cryptography, and I won't be spending any time uh, re-explaining things in the algorithm. If you'd uh, like to check out my earlier videos to gain some familiarity with the algorithm, links for them are in the description below. And if you've already seen my earlier videos, welcome back and let's get started. So there are two decryption techniques that I'm going to be talking about today. The first of which is decryption through semi-prime factorization, and the second of which is decryption through logarithmic techniques. Both of these methods are pretty infamous for being really time-consuming to carry out, and the difficulty of carrying out either of these methods are what the founders of RSA had in mind when they were trying to make their algorithm the strongest one out there. So decryption method one, semi-prime factorization. So we know that in RSA encryption, the public key consists of the values of n and e, while the private value, while the pri private key consists of the values of p, q, phi, n, and d. So in decryption through semi-prime factorization, the magnitude of the semi-prime number proves to be of paramount importance in preventing the hacker, or uh, I'll be referring to the hacker as the message inter interceptor. Uh, from calculating the decryption key. In RSA encryption, the semi-prime number is n, which is the product of the two values of p and q. So n is equal to p times q. Now the, va the value of n is available to the message inter interceptor because it is a public key value. So the message interceptor must factor the semi-prime number n into its constituent factors p and q. Once the message interceptor has factored the semi-prime n, he can plug the, the values of p and q into the expression p minus 1 times q minus 1 to find the phi of n. So after the message interceptor has attained the value of phi n, he can plug this value of phi n along with the public key value of e into the equation e times d mod phi n equals 1, and solve for d. This all sounds pretty great for the message interceptor. He seems to have calculated d pretty easily, but there is a catch. And it happens when the message interceptor is trying to factor the public key value of n into its constituent factors p and q. So what's the problem with trying to factor n into its factors p and q? Well, the problem is that n is typically a really, really, really huge number. I think I showed this video and I think I showed this uh, visual in my first video, uh, but this is the kind of length that I'm talking about for a semi-prime number n. So because of the difficulty of factoring n, it's going to take a long time for the message interceptor to get the values of p and q, and thus it's going to take a long time to get the value of phi n, and thus it's going to take a long time to gain access to the value of d. Now, if you've watched my earlier videos, this information shouldn't really be that, be that new to you, but what I'm really excited to talk to you today about is actually something that I wrote a paper on, and that is decryption through logarithmic techniques. So recall that encrypting a secret message requires plugging that secret message m into the expression m to the e mod m to the e power mod n. And decrypting that message requires plugging in the result of m to the e mod n, which is also known as c, into the expression c to the d mod n to attain the original message m. So the message interceptor, like all others, has access to the public key values of n and e. He can generate a secret integer message m and plug it into the expression m to the e power mod n to attain the ciphertext or encrypted message, which is c. So he can plug the value of c that he got from this expression into the expression c to the d power mod n, and know that the result of the expression c to the d power mod n must equal his original message m, because this is a decryption expression. So what the message interceptor has essentially done here is created an equation in which 1, 2, 3 
um, known values exist and only one unknown value, which is d, exists. So rule of algebra here, one equation, one unknown, you can solve for that unknown. So how is the message interceptor going to solve for that unknown value that is the decryption key d? Well, I think it's a little easier to see with an example, so. So if we say that the public key values of n and e are 143 and 7, respectively, and the message interceptor picks his secret message m to be, we'll say, 24, then the enciphered message would be 24 to the 7th power mod 143 which simplifies to 106, which is the encrypted or ciphertext message. So then the message interceptor can plug in the values of C, which is 106, 143, which is N, into the decryption expression, which is C to the D mod N, as if he's about to decrypt his own enciphered message. And he knows that the result of this is going to have to equal his original message, which was M, or which he knows to be 24, because this is the decryption expression. So whatever the result of it must equal the original message, M. Now the message interceptor knows that the value of 106 to the D power is going to have to be 24 more than 143 for this modular re relationship to work. So 143 plus 24 is 167, and 167 mod 143 is equal to a remainder of 24, because 143 goes into 167 uh, evenly once, but leaves a remainder of 24. So what the message interceptor can do now is, knowing that these two are equivalent, he can set them equal to each other. And then he can solve for d by taking the log of either side of the equation. And then using one of the properties of logs regarding exponentiation, he can isolate d like so. And finally solve for d uh, by dividing the right side of the equation by the log of 106. Now, if I get a calculator out and solve for this, I'm going to get a value of 1.0974 as my result for d. And that number keeps on continuing. It's a decimal. However, d has the restriction that it must be an integer value, which this value is not. But that doesn't mean that the message interceptor has to disregard this method of calculating the decryption key. So if we look here, the it's important to note that 167 divided by 143 is not the only modular relationship that's going to yield 24 as a remainder. There are other modular relationships that exist that can yield 24 as a remainder. So for example, 143 multiplied by 2 is 286, and 286 plus 24 is 310, and 310 mod 286 is equal to 24. So this is another modular relationship that's going to yield a remainder of 24. Similarly, uh, 143 multiplied by 3 is 429, and 429 plus 24 is 453. So this is yet another modular relationship that's going to yield 24 as a remainder. And again, 143 times 4 is going to be 572. And 572 plus 24 is going to give me 596. Another modular relationship that's going to yield a remainder of 24. So you can keep on multiplying this value of 143 by increasing in integers essentially forever. But the question is, how many times do you have to do it until you get a value here that is going to uh, equal 106 to the d power and give you d as an integer? Well, as it turns out, you're going to have to do this a bunch of times. 
and we can actually figure out how many times you're going to have to do this just for curiosity's sake by calling this increasing integer here oh well, uh, let's see, we can call it x and isolating it so what we were doing before was multiplying 143 by some increasing integer x adding 24 to 143x and putting that value in the place of 106 to the d power and saying, hey, this is a modular relationship that's going to give me the secret message 24 as an answer. So because we're putting 143x plus 24 in the place of 106 to the d power, we can set these two equal to each other like this. Now when we solved for d earlier, we got that d was equal to log 167 uh, divided by log 106, which gave us a decimal answer for d. But if we solve for d with this x involved, we get something that looks like this. d equals 143x plus 24 divided by log 106. So what we can do, instead of having isolated d, is we can isolate x and then solve for it. Now, fair warning, um, isolating x and solving for it to actually get an answer for x does require knowledge of the decryption key d so only the key generator would be able to do this the key the message interceptor wouldn't be able to calculate how many iterations it would take um, to be able to calculate d through this logarithmic technique that we were discussing before so if we're the key generator and we want to solve for x then we know that d is equal to log n, which is 143, times x plus 24, or the secret message m, divided by the log of the ciphertext message c, which is 106 in our example here. So knowing this, we can start solving for x. So we first do this by multiplying both sides of the equation by the log of the ciphertext message c to get the expression d, or the equation d times log c is equal to the log of n times x plus, uh, plus m. Now if we're using base 10 logarithms here, we can say that 10 to the d power times the log of c is equal to n times x plus m. Then we can subtract m from both sides of the equation to get n times x on one side alone. And finally, we can solve for x by dividing both sides of our equation by n. So here we see that the number of iterations that it would take to calculate d through this logarithmic technique is 10 to the d power times log c minus m all divided by n, by n. Now again, remember, only the key generator can figure out exactly how many iterations it's going to take because they are the only ones who have access to the private key value of d. Now this value can get really, really big here. Now in the example that we were working in before, n was 143. The secret message m was 24, the ciphertext message was 106, um, and d turned out to be 103. And again, remember this is private knowledge that really wouldn't be available to the public, we're just doing it for curiosity's sake to determine how many iterations this would take. If we um, simplified this expression, or this, we're going to get a value that is this large couldn't even do it on my calculator, I had to go on Wolfram Alpha. So you can see that in the case of either semi-prime factorization or this new method that we discussed uh, using logarithms, there's just going to be a massive amount of iterations that are going to have to take place to finally be able to calculate the decryption key D. And even though this is bad news for the message interce interceptor, it's good news for us because it means that our information stays secure. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.